his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children
eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus. He will not disappoint you. I have a word for a woman. And uh, the Lord says to you, you did not have a father in your home, a father to love you, a father to protect you, because that's the role of a father, but you didn't have that growing up. And that led you into a path of destruction. But the Lord says to you, I am your father. And no one will be able to snatch you out of my hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take hold of those words. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. Oh, hallelujah. We serve such a powerful God. He deserves all honor. He deserves all praise. Hallelujah. Oh, what a merciful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit is ministering to people right now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Spirit of God, move in a powerful way. Heal the brokenhearted, Lord. Give peace to those who are anxious this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power of your blood, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, what a beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit. We're now going to partake communion. Please take your seats in this atmosphere of worship. Hallelujah. God is so good. And I would like to read to you the first prophecy in the Bible. This was spoken by God straight after Adam and Eve committed high treason against him. And God said to Satan, and this is the first prophecy in the Bible, and I will put enmity, hostility, between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now, what does that have to do with communion? Everything. Because this is speaking about Jesus dying on the cross and the defeat of Satan. So when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he said, it is finished, when he pronounced those words, this prophecy was fulfilled, came to pass, and Satan's fate was sealed. That's it. And Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. So we never forget the seriousness of sins because that's what you know made Jesus go to the cross he had to go to the cross because of sin but the triumph of the cross is such a powerful thing this prophecy has been fulfilled he has paid the price for our iniquities that's why we can stand before Him. That's why we can share communion. So we remember this, the broken body of Jesus on the cross and His blood flowing from His body for you and for me. You know what? I was meditating upon this and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and say, on Sunday, you are going to ask people to pray for one another so they have a fresh revelation of what this means. Because sometimes people take communion. I've, I've done that. You take communion and you don't really understand what you're doing. This is big. This is a big deal. This is a big deal, what we are celebrating this morning. So as you stand up, please stand up. Before we share communion, I would like you to close your eyes and pray for the person on your left, on your right, in front of you, behind you. And pray that God will reveal to them how powerful this is. 
the triumph of the cross, what that really means for us. So why don't we do that right now? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray that this morning, in this morning, people will have a fresh revelation of the power of the cross, of what it means, the triumph of the cross, that blood of Jesus flowing from His body, the blood of the new covenant, hallelujah, the broken body of Jesus on that cross. Oh, hallelujah, by the stripes of Jesus we have been healed. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, we have peace in our hearts. We have communion with the Creator, the living God. Oh, hallelujah, our enemy is defeated. He's under our feet in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks, Father, for the power, the power of the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have been saved. We have eternal life. Oh, thank you, Father. If we die today, we will be with you in your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, thank you, Father. You are amazing. You are amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Did you feel the presence of God? Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's eat the bread together. Picture in your mind Jesus hanging on that cross for you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, there are not enough words to say thank you. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. Ah, the blood of the new covenant. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Ah, we can do it. We can come to the presence of the living God that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Who needs grace this morning? Who needs mercy? I need mercy. I need help. Oh, hallelujah. We need this and we can come to the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miracles are happening right now. Miracles are happening. Hallelujah. You know what? The prayer team is coming now forward. I was not going to do this, but I, I feel the Holy Spirit wants us to do that. So our prayer team is coming. And um, if you have a need this morning, if you have no peace in your heart, if you're troubled by something, if your heart is broken, If you've been carrying a very heavy burden, come today for prayer. Because there's, there's an anointing here for that. If you need healing in your family, come forward now in faith, believing for a miracle, a breakthrough. Come on. Let's pray for one another. Let's worship Kristen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you for miracles. Thank you for miracles. Hallelujah.
for delivering your people from the enemy in the name of Jesus father I pray for the families here and I pray Lord that your your protection will come upon everyone right now in the name of Jesus Christ whatever plan the enemy had intended against the families in this church I cleanse I cancel it in the name of Jesus in the in the power of that name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you and you take your hands off the families in this church in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are a mighty and powerful God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift our hands to the Lord, amen. 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 So wonderful, so wonderful. I tell you what, the presence of the Lord is here. And I know, I know He's touching people here at the front. I know that He's touching people all around this place today. I know He's touching people online today. Father, we bring those that are in hospitals today. Those, Lord, that are sick and could be here today. Father, we speak the Word of God over them. We declare by the stripes of Jesus, they were healed. And we speak to every muscle, every tendon, every organ in their bodies. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we bring those that are broken hearted, those that are, Lord, going through tough times. And we thank you today. Lord, you are our refuge. You are the one that turns our mourning into dancing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the turnaround in situations, in people's lives. Father, those that are looking for jobs, Father, we, we command in the name of Jesus doors to be open. Lord, jobs to come along, opportunities in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Guide the steps of your people, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Father, those that have gone through loss, Father, we pray that you, you're the one that comforts. You comfort, Lord, the brokenhearted. And we thank you today, Father, for comfort. Those that have gone through loss, those that have gone through, Lord, hardship and, and difficult situations. Father, we thank you today. We say the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause His wonderful face to shine upon you. We declare, may the Lord give you breakthrough. May the Lord open doors that have been shut in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring the right people your way and without the wrong people. May the Lord open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that there'll be no room big enough to contain it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. While we stand in his attitude of worship and prayer, you know, uh, this is a wonderful song that we've just sung. And, uh, and it's a song that says, it's a song that we could sing to each other. It, it's a song about family. And you know, church is a family. We are a family. We're not an organization, some kind of uh, thing. I mean, we are people that, and we are a family. Amen. We are the family of God. And one of the wonderful things about being a family you know, 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says this. It says, if a member suffers, then all suffer with him. Amen. So, you know, we're there for one another in the good times, in the not so good times. We're, we're there for one another when, you know, we're happy and it's a sunny day and, and everything has gone well. And we, we, but we are there also, you know, in those times when storms come against us. Amen. When the enemy comes to buffet, you know, we stand on behalf of one another. We raise our shields of faith. Amen. We quench the fiery darts of the wicked one in Jesus' name. Just before we pray a final prayer, I need a, you know, as many of you may be aware, our dear, our dear Karen Lim 
has, has gone home to be with the Lord. She's been promoted to the arms of the Jesus that she so many times worships from that piano. But she's in His presence. We feel the, the, the loss. We feel sad. But we rejoice in the fact that one day we'll be together in heaven, worshiping God with her. So she's been such a blessing to our church. More than 30 years serving God faithfully, zealously. Every Sunday, every event here as a connect group leader, as a mentor to musicians, as an inspiration to all of us, giving what she had so we could enjoy the presence of Jesus. And you know, um, we we're comforted in the fact that she's with Jesus. Amen. We don't, we don't mourn like the world because death is not, it doesn't mean to us what it means to the world. And as far as we understand, she's in the presence of Jesus, worshiping Him in a glorified body. And they will, and one day we'll be together. That's such comfort, such joy. You know, during this time of loss, for um, let us remember our family in our prayers. Pink son and Jennifer, Kenneth and Caitlin and and um, Calvin, and let's let's surround them with our love. Let's surround them with our love. Let's just at every opportunity just tell them we love them, and um, of course allowing them the space and and the the privacy that is required and appropriate and needed during this time you know but let's just surround it with our love and our prayers you know a service to celebrate her life uh, will be announced at some stage but I, just, well, I felt we needed to stop as a family this morning just to acknowledge our sister and just to be thankful for the gift that she show, so generously shared with all of us amen why don't we just pray right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We acknowledge the wonderful gift, the wonderful woman that Karen Lim was and is today before your throne. Father, we thank you that you have given her to us. and She's no longer with us in the flesh. But Father, we are comforted and joyful in the fact, Lord, that she stands before you. The one she sung songs about the one she played for. Now she stands before you, seeing you face to face, beholding your glory, the beauty of your countenance. Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you for the, the testimony of her life, the inspiration that she was. We thank you that the lives she touched. We thank you for the musicians she mentored. We thank you for her role, Lord, even in this church as a connect group leader. So many were touched by her. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And Father, we want as a congregation to pray, to surround Lord, uh, um, to surround Pink Sun and Jennifer with, um, with our love today. And, and Lord, um, and Kenneth and Kathleen and, and Calvin, Father, we want to, today, we want your presence to be very real to them. We want the comfort of the Holy Spirit to come strong upon their lives. We want them to be so aware of the presence of God today, of your closeness, of, your, of how you are with them, Lord, even through this situation, Father. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for doing that. Lord, we praise you. We adore you. Lord, let them, let them know today, Lord. Let, let, let them sense our love for them and our appreciation uh, for, for them as a family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing Hallelujah. it just one more time. We're just one more time. Hallelujah. His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. Look, just look at one another today. Let's pray the blessing of God upon each one of us. And the 
stand with you in this difficult time. Father, I pray for these families, Lord, that have lost loved ones, Lord, dear to them. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you that we will see them again, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for your hand upon these families, Lord. I pray that the joy of the Holy Spirit will fill their hearts the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I'm reminded of your word or death. Where is your sting? Where is your sting? We know that this is but for a moment and that enemy will be completely defeated. And we thank you, Father, for eternal life. So thank you, Father, for these beautiful families that are going a difficult time. Help them, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. You guys are looking very good this morning. Why don't you go ahead, grab your seats as you do. Tell the person next to you what you had for breakfast. having some fun with that. What we want to do every week, it's very important to us, we want to welcome anybody who's here with us for the very first time. We welcome everybody, thank you for coming, but for the people that are here for the very first time, if, if it is your first week at Australia for Christ Church, we would love to just honor you, thank you for coming, make you feel welcome here. So if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand, just give me a little wave. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you just keep your hand up. Oh, it's Sam. Hi, Sam. <laughs> um, if you keep your hand up, one of our hosts will come around, they'll give you a little bag. In there, there's a whole bunch of stuff for you to keep. Um, you can also go to the guest lounge afterwards, get some great coffee, meet some great people. But there is one thing in there called an info card. It's just a bunch of stuff, details, basic stuff to fill out. Helps us get to know how you found out about our church, what you thought of it, who invited you, all that kind of stuff. Helps us to reach out and connect with you as well during the week. If you don't want to fill that out, don't worry. Just meet us in the guest lounge. We'll talk. Come back next week. You're part of the family. And then we're good to go from there. All right. Let's go into a time of giving. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. It says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given you only what came from your hand. I was reading this passage this morning and, and this particular verse and I was thinking being this happy to give is rare. It's like, I was going to say weird, but it's, it's a good thing, right? It's rare. And it's as if David has like a gratitude that he gets to give. And I'll speak for myself. I won't speak on behalf of you guys. But for me, I find a lot of the time, like when I give, like I give because it's the right thing to do. Like, I'm, I'm happy to do it, but I'm happy to do it because it's the right thing, not because I'm, like, happy that I get to give, if that makes sense. And I was, like, thinking about it. I'm like, man, I want to get to the point where I'm, like, I'm excited to give. Like, the, the point where I'm like, man, who am I? Who are my friends? Who are my parents that we get to 
give to God, that He has blessed us so richly, that He has just taken care of everything, that from His hand He has just gracefully kept on giving us. And I look around at my friends sometimes and I'm like, we live a great life. And God has been so good. And I look around at this church and like look at this building and look at what we're doing and look at the impact we're having on Roeville and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, there's a reason to be grateful that you get to give. And I pray that God would just remind us of that this morning as we do give. And if you do want to give, you can give online, net bank, website, you can text. If you prefer to give in person, there will be bags at the end of service. I'll pray, we'll go to church news, and then we'll have a great sermon coming up. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to give. Lord, thank you that you have blessed us so much in this life, God. And I pray you would let us get to that point where we say, who am I? that you would just allow me to give so generously. God, I pray that you would work in our hearts to be more generous to the people around us, to your mission, to the missionaries that are going out into the world and in places that we will never reach, Lord. And I pray that you would just help us and guide us in in our generosity, God, that we would always remember that everything has come from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, we can check out Church News. Good morning, church. Welcome to the fifth and the final Sunday of July. I cannot believe how fast July has flown by. So, so, so quickly. We have like, what, four, five months till Christmas? Yeah, something like that. We have some announcements to get to, so let's head right, right into it. it. Church, get excited, get ready for a powerful healing service with Pastor Alejandro Arias. And you already know the drill. Come expectant for miracles, healings, and breakthroughs. And you guys know what time church starts. 10 a.m. on Sunday, the 8th of August, right here at Australia for Christ Church. We all know someone who needs a miracle in their bodies, their circumstances, and their lives. And so pick up those phones you're on, make a text, a call, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Let them know when and where to be. We can't wait to see you there. Hey Vic, so mm -hmm. do you tell people when you need prayer for something? Yeah, I do because I have my circle. Oh, that's pretty great. But what if there are people in church who don't have a circle? Well, if they're here at church, they have a circle. Let them know. We have a pastoral prayer team who pray for your needs day and night. So go on, email prayer requests to your circle right here at church. And feel free to come at 9.45 a.m. before service starts for an in-person prayer. We love to stand together with you to see your breakthrough. And hey, when you see your breakthrough take place, make sure you tell us about it because we love hearing about the miracles God has done in your life. We can't wait to hear them. Send in your testimonies. Thank you so much for watching church. We've got an amazing word coming up. And so we hope you get ready for that. Get your Bibles out. Now this person next to you, tell them to get off the phone. Get, get ready phone. for it. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next week. See ya.
Or some people you've had like the, like the heavens have been made have been like brass over your head and I felt the Lord saying you know as my people were worshiping me I, I just saw these like hands just puncturing through the the you know whatever was covering and and there's an open heaven over your life in the name of Jesus come on come on we have to sing it one more time one more time hey. we'll see you down Say, I am blessed. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Give the Lord Jesus a big hand. Amen. And while you, uh, when you take your seat, just look at the person next to you and say, you're looking at a blessed person in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Good job, Kristen. Amen. Amen. Can we, can, we, can we say thank you to our musicians? Didn't they do a great job today? Amen. So, so grateful for all our musicians. You know, these guys are amazing. Praise God. They help us, uh, you know, facilitate. They just help us come, 
closer to God, sense His presence. So, so grateful for them. Well, so grateful for all of you here today. You know, church wouldn't be the same without you. So thank, thank you for coming today. Amen. Thank you. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Those of you watching right, online right now, thank you for joining us today. If it is your first time, you know, uh, we're so grateful that you've tuned in. And why don't you subscribe to this channel? And while you're at it, just put a like on this message. It would encourage us so much. But hey, even better than sitting behind a, a screen would be to come 1070 Stud Road next Sunday. It's going to be amazing. Hey, church, we have Pastor Alejandro Arias coming, and we're going to bring all our friends, anything that moves, and if it doesn't move, it will move, because it's a healing meeting. Amen. Are you excited? Yes. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome, and, uh, and I want to encourage everybody to come early next week. Uh, I was just reading uh, Pastor Alejandro's uh, latest uh, uh, newsletter, and, and it's amazing. Every newsletter I get, I mean, there's so many testimonies of people healed. I mean, amazing. I mean, you know, things that were impossible, medically speaking, and God is healing people. Amen. There's no doubt that God uses people uh, like him. And, and by the way, he wants to use all of us. Amen. Just this week, I got in a wonderful testimony. Someone from one of our Connect groups, the whole Connect group prayed for them, and, they, and, uh, and something that was incurable is healed in Jesus' name. Isn't that wonderful? Come on. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So, you know, church not a dark place lit with candles where God's nowhere to be seen and nothing ever happens. No. Church is a place where miracles happen. Amen. Amen. And I believe this morning miracles have already happened. Amen. And even as the word goes forth, I believe miracles can and will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. I was preaching in a place in Christ Church. And I, I just I preached a message and I had just finished preaching. And I said, Lord, okay, let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. And I was going to pray for people. And as I'm about to, to pray for people, like I always do, you know, this lady started shouting from the middle of the congregation. I'm like, hey, what happened? What happened? You know? uh, normally, I'm the one doing the shouting. I'm the preacher. I've got the mic. Come on. This lady said, hey, stop it, preacher. You don't understand this. I could, when he said, let's all stand, that's something I can't do. And I am standing. I am standing, and then she started trying her legs. I'm like, wow, that's cool. I mean, that's really cool. Amen. The Bible says God sent his word and healed them. So I'm expecting as the word goes forth, something is going to happen in your circumstances, in your world. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm already preaching, and I haven't even started. No. Praise God. I want to welcome again also everybody that is, that is here for the first time. You've already been welcomed. But we just want you to know that you are double welcome. We just love you. Thank you for coming today. Straight after this service, you go out that door. There's a cafe. Uh, and, and if you go just a little bit beyond the cafe, there'll be a, a smiley, welcoming team of, of us. The, our guest lounge team is going to be there. And I'm going to be there myself. And I'd love to welcome you. I'd love to shake your hand. And just get to know you, who you are for five minutes. If you brought someone with you for the first time, just take them over to the guest lounge. We would love to connect with them. Amen. Can we just give it up one more time for our everybody that's visiting. Thank you today for visiting. Praise God. Praise God. Are you ready for the word? Yes. I'm going to continue today uh, the word that I started last week. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to speak the word of God with power. And I thank you for the grace that is upon this word, for the empowerment that comes with your word. I thank you that as your word goes forth, it will not turn void to you, but it shall accomplish the purpose which you've sent it. Father, in Jesus' name, and I take authority in the realm of the spirit, and everything that we try to oppose the word of God is bound right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare every mind and every heart open to receive the word of God today. And all of God's people say, amen. amen, amen, amen. Psalm 119 verse 162 says this. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. And then Job 23 verse 12 says this. I have treasured uh, your words in my mouth more than my necessary food. Wow, that's, that's a big deal. Amen. When you treasure the words of God so much, 
that you don't leave before the end of the service, you're going to get food. You, you already feel fed yeah. by the word of God. Amen. So, uh, pun for the cheeky ones. Psalm 119 verse 103 says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Wow, that's, that puts the word of God on a level that is so, so powerful. It is satisfying more than food. It is sweeter more than honey. And uh, it is a treasure. Now, I started last week asking you the question, what is your relationship with the Word of God like? Do you engage with it? Is it a treasure to you? Do you seek to grow in the Word? Do you have a full revelation of the power that is contained within the pages of your Bible? Do you, have you engaged the Word on a, such a deep level that, that suddenly... You don't just have an intellectual experience. You have a, you have a, what's the word, sensorial? Sensory, sense, sensorial, is that the, sensory, sensory. Anyway, are you sensing this? I mean, do you, do, do you, it's like you, you have more than an intellectual kind of deposit. You have a, an experience with the word of God. How many of you understand eating is an experience? Eating is not looking at the menu. Eating is actually <laughs> eating what the menu talks about. You can lick the menu all you want. You can, you know, but it's still, it, it's not going to do to you what it will do when you taste. And the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So the Word of God, when you engage with the Word of God, suddenly your spiritual taste buds are activated and it becomes it becomes uh, more than just intellectual ascent. It becomes an experience. And you come and you hear someone preach, and, and you, it's like you're, you're in a banquet, and you are enjoying what is being put before you. And you open the Word, you're, you're going to go like, well, this is God's pantry. It's filled with great stuff, and I'm going to be fed in the Word of God. So what is the level of your engagement with the Word of God. Do you eat it? <laughs> Do you read it? Do you dream it, speak it, pray it, declare it? Is it part of, is it part of your life? And unfortunately, I, I think uh, uh, th there were days when I think people really had that kind of engagement with the Word of God. I remember when I gave my life to the Lord, I, I mean, people, people devoured the Word of God. Actually, in those days, it was a bit tricky to be a pastor because they would come up to you and say, Pastor, show me that in the Bible. And I mean, he had to have scripture for everything. Pastor Dave is over there, right, Pastor Dave? Yeah, show me that in the Bible. Because people were like the, the Bereans. They knew their stuff. You could just pull wool over their head. I mean, you had to really know your stuff. Amen? Um, and... Uh, and, but we live in the days, I mean, you go to Quran and you see, I, I, just, just, I, I just went on their website and I just checked how many Bibles do they have. I mean, they have all kinds of Bible. I mean, they have more than 100 translations of the Bible. They have like, you know, the Bible this and the Bible that and John Maxwell Bible and this Bible and the so-and-so the Bible and this Bible and the ladies Bible and the men's Bible and the, I even came across a Patriot's Bible and uh, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of Bibles. There's never been this many Bibles available. And it's on printed form. It's on audio form. It's, it's everywhere. And I think probably we are probably the most biblically illiterate uh, 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 generation that has, ever, that has ever lived. I mean, Smith Wigglesworth could hardly read anything else, but he could read his Bible. You know? So I want to encourage you today. I think there's a lot of distractions. I think there's a lot of reasons why people are not reading the Bible. But anyway, I want to go against that. And I believe our, our, our church actually enjoys the Bible, loves the Bible. You're Bible kind of people. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and I thank God for that. You appreciate the Word of God. You love the Word of God. So, but I want to encourage you further so that you become more and more a, a person of the Word of God. Now, I want to come into the central text of our, te of our message today which is taken from Acts chapter 20. And I don't have time, unfortunately, this morning to read the whole of Acts chapter 20. But I want to extract one verse out of Acts chapter 20. 
for uh, the purpose of our message today. So the Bible says, no, so now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Everyone say, the word, the word. of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Now, this passage is part of the last sermon that Paul preached to the church of the Ephesians. It was a young church. He started that church. And, uh, but now he had felt that God had given him another assignment, and it was time for him to move on. And so this was his last message to, actually, the leaders of that church. This was his last, the last time that he was going to be with them. In verse 38, it actually says that, that they, all, they, they were all very sad because... He said that this was going to be the last time that they, were going to, they were going to see the Apostle Paul. But you see, for three years, the Apostle Paul had stayed with them and he had taught them all the word of God that he knew. He said, later on we will read about that, how I kept back nothing that was helpful. He gave them everything. He gave them all the word of God that he knew. Acts 20, 21, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you. You know, from house to house, uh, publicly and from house to house, in a public setting and in an intimate setting of, of, of connect groups, I've, 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 uh, I've, I've publicly, I've, I, I, I've testified to you. It says right here, and I taught you. Everyone say taught. I taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying. Everyone, everyone say testifying to Jews and also to Greeks. Repentance toward God. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Those are some of the elementary doctrines of Christ according to Hebrews chapter 6. Look at verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare, everyone say declare, yes. the whole counsel of God. Wow, I don't even know what the whole counsel of God is. And I've been studying the counsel of God for a long time. So, but Paul knew. He knew everything. And he gave them everything. He did not shun to declare them. The whole counsel of God, the whole of the word of God, everything that he knew. And in verse 31, he said, therefore watch, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn. Everyone say warn. Everyone say proclaim, taught, testified, declared, warned. Everyone night and day with tears. You know, let, let me tell you something about preachers. Preachers are not just people to stand in the pulpit. Preachers, a lot of times, they're watchmen on the wall. They're people that sometimes in the night seasons of life, they're watching. They're standing on the wall. They're looking into the realm of the Spirit. They, they look with a prophetic eye to see what God is saying, what's coming up, and to hear what God is saying. And then what, what, what they come and what they deliver on a pulpit sometimes is the result of standing on the wall and sometimes, and, and like the watchman, just, just watching. And in actual fact, if you read the whole of the passage, the, the Paul is speaking also prophetically and saying to them, you know, I, there'll be, when I leave, there'll be ravenous wolves, savage wolves that will come. So he had prophetic insight and, and he warned them, some of, tea, some, some of what we do can be teaching, can be declaration, can be all of that. Some of it can be a warning. If you read the book of Hebrews is a book of warnings. So heed the warnings of God. And he said, don't forget that, that I, I, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So Paul proclaimed the word in every possible way, in every possible facet. He, he proclaimed, he taught, he testified, he declared, he warned night and day for Three years, actually the last message he preached, he preached so long that he went right through the night and some poor young guy that was on the third floor of a building fell down, not under the power, but he just it was just too much preaching. <laughs> and, and guess what? The apostle Paul went over, resurrected him from the dead and just carried on preaching. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because the apostle Paul knew the importance, the power of the word of God. He knew he was, he was going to be with them just a short time. And he wanted to leave with them as much word of God as possible. So I want you to see the importance of the word of God. So, you know, someone may say, but, you know, is, is, it, is it fair to leave 
baby Christians. You know, I mean, you preach and you leave them, you know, you be you, you with them three years and then you just take off. Three years of preaching, is that enough? And just, then just leave a whole bunch of baby Christians on their own to fend for themselves, is that right? But I, I, that just shows that the Apostle Paul believed in the power of the Word of God to sustain them. And another question you may ask is this, well, didn't the Apostle Paul say that after their departure, there would be ravenous wolves that would come and, and all this kind of stuff? Well, that shows you again how the Apostle Paul so believed in the power of the Word of God that he believed that even though they were, they were young in the faith, even though there were people trying to deceive them, and the enemy was, even though all of that, that the Word of God was able to sustain them, it was going to be... Uh, the Word of God was going to be a protection against deception. Amen. That, that is how much the uh, Apostle Paul valued the importance of the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, give the Lord a hand. Do something. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And Paul had taught him. But you see, let me get this point. Now they were going to have to be diligent to study the Word for themselves. You know, the responsibility of our personal growth cannot rest solely on the ministry of a preacher. Thank God for preachers and teachers, and we need them. Amen. We need them. But your personal growth, your spiritual growth, you are responsible for your spiritual growth. We are individually to engage in the Word of God. We need to study the Word of God for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you can't say, well, so-and-so committed adultery because in church you never speak about it. Now listen. <laughs> Everyone has a Bible. One day you can't come before God and go like, oh God, you know this and that. And I, I just, it's, my pastor never preached about that. Yes, but I gave you the Bible. I gave you the word. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't always be baby fed. And we need to find the word of God for ourselves. You need to know, you know what? Because the word is protection against deception. Well, you know me. I'm, I'm a good guy. I study the Word. But how will you discern some guy on YouTube that's telling you something really weird that some angel appeared to him and told him and da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da and there's so many people in absolute de deception. And we as pastors, we have to deal with a lot of that. But pastor so-and-so is on YouTube and he said this and that and the other. I don't care what so-and-so said. What did God say? Does that line up with the Word of God? Amen. Amen. So for your own sake, you know, you know, because 2,000 years later, we still need to leave focus on the word. The challenges have not stopped. The savage, savage walls, the powers of deception are still at work. However, the believer that is focused on the word, to, to be diligent, to read, to meditate, to hear, to speak, and to be a doer of the word will not succumb, but it will be sustained, will be strengthened, will be overcoming. One day, one day I was, I, was, I was praying, and I got this picture, this vision, just in, in the, kind of in my mind, I just saw this vision of a little, have you ever had those, you know, some little bird makes a, a nest in your roof or whatever? We had, we had these little birds that came, and, and I was going there checking the whole, the, whole pro, the whole process, you know, from the egg. I'm like, whoa, th three cute little eggs, and... And then the eggs one day, and that was big news in our home. You know, there, you know, the little birds. We've got three little birds now. Wow, cool, cool. And then, and then you see, mother bird comes and, and you know, regurgitates all that stuff that's in your garden, then gives it to them, and then they eat and all this kind of stuff. You know. Anyway, I, once I was praying, and I was I was praying. Uh, this was many years ago, about a certain church, and the Lord sh showed me. Like a little, a whole bunch of people, like in a, in a little communal, <laughs> a, whole bunch, a huge nest. And they're all with their beaks open and some bird just coming and dropping stuff. And said, the Lord said to me, you know, a lot of my people are like that. Their eyes are shut. 
Their beaks are open. Whatever comes, whatever, whatever, whatever lands on their, whatever said, whatever is being said, whatever, you know, it, they, they'll swallow it. How many of you understand God wants you to open your eyes? Yeah. Amen. There's a, there's a time to be a baby. There's a time to mature. There's a time to be discerning. There's a time to know what's right and what's wrong. What's phony, what's fake, and what's real. Amen. There's a time when someone prophesies something over you. You know, don't take it to the bank. You check it alongside the Word of God. This is line up with the Word of God. Amen. Yes, the Lord says, yes. You know, you're going to be, um, oh, this is, you know, some weird prophecy. I'm, I mean, we've, I, I don't even want to go there. Anyway, just, just some weird, some weird, some, some weird, just weird. <laughs> hey, don't despise prophecies, okay? But it will help if you know the word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. All right, here we go. Now, Paul commended them to God and to his word. Acts 20, 32 says this. But now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able, everyone say able, able. to build you up, to build you up. Paul knew that he could trust the ability of the word. It is able to build you up. It is able to build you up. I will not be here, but the word that I preach will, is able to build you up. It's able to build you up. Able, and, and the word in, able in the gr Greek language is the word dynamino. Everyone say dynamino. Dynamino. And dynamino is, it means literally that the word of God is dynamic. It's, it means that the word of God is dynamic. It comes loaded with God's supernatural dynamic ability to build you up. The word of God is able, it means that it, it, has, it has the ability to, it has dynamic dynamos. It has, it is, it comes empowered by the Holy Spirit to do something in your life. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, says, For the word of God speaks, for the word of God that God speaks is alive and is full of power, making it active. Everyone say active. active. Everyone say operative. operative. Energizing. Energizing. Effective. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. So the Word of God is, is all of these things. It's energizing. It's operative. It's effective. The Word of God, the Word of His grace is dynamic in its power. In actual fact, it's called the Word of His grace. Because the word grace, the word grace actually always carries the idea of being empowered to do something. When you are graced to do something, it means you are empowered to do something. So the word of his grace is full of power. It's alive and it's full of power. And it's graced, it is empowered to do that which, for which God has sent it. Amen? Amen. Are you convinced that you, that you need to read the word? Amen. Amen. Praise God. The word of God is able to build you up. I, I think of this scripture in Jeremiah 24 verse 6. It says, for I will set my eyes... Upon them for good. Aren't you glad that when God looks at you, it's for good? That when God speaks to you, it's for good. That, that, that God's word is dynamino. Sometimes there's some words that come across a little bit mino, but, but they're dino, mino, so, but they're for you good. <laughs> I'll try that again another time. For the, I will set my eyes on them for the good, and I will bring them back to this land, and I will build them up. Everyone say, I'll build them up. And I'll pull them down. Aren't you glad that God, whatever God says, is never to pull you down, but it's always to build you up. Never to pluck you, but to plant you. Never to defeat you, but to prosper. So you pray, prosper you in everything that you do. Amen. Amen. Even the rebukes of God are for your good. When God tells you off, just welcome it. And go like, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to fight this. Maybe I really needed to hear this. And just submit to the process and say, okay, God, I'll obey. Because it's always for your good. Now, I will build them up. So the materials God uses to build up, what are they? His word. His word is able to build you up, to edify, 
What does build up mean? To edify, to construct, to create, to grow, to reinforce. That's what the Word of God does. So when we engage with the Word, with the, with the word and we read it, we are adding a permanent, indestructible substance to our faith. Come what may, we, we will not be moved. And how many of you understand, sometimes things do come. Sometimes life throws you a curveball. Sometimes the enemy comes and plays some kind of a trick. But when you're founded and you're strong in the Word of God, then the Word of God is your circumstance. Then the Word of God is what dictates your decision. Then the Word of God is what dictates how you're going to respond to that situation. The Word of God. However, the lack of the Word leads to the opposite outcome. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people... Oh, oh, so God's not talking about somebody else. It's talking about His people. My people, Hosea 4, 6, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You know, ignorance is not a blessing. What you don't know may be killing you. <laughs> you would have heard about that, you know. And, but as the same way the Word of God empowers you, this, in the same way, without the, without the Word, you are not... You are not up to the task. You cannot fight that devil. You cannot fight that thing that has come against you. you you're going to be a casualty. And God doesn't want you to be a casualty. God wants you to be victorious. Yes. Am I helping you today? Yes. Yeah, come on. Yes. All right. So, you know, another thing that's interesting that the, the, the Apostle Paul mentioned here, we didn't have time to go through all of that, but he mentioned, he said, at my departure there will be Savage wolves. I like, the, I like the old King James that says, ravenous wolves will come. What you, want, what you need to see is that uh, uh, it, this, this, man should, this is mentioned here so that you, you understand that how the devil hates the word of God and how he will try no, not just to distort it but to extract it from your life. The devil comes against the word. When God in the beginning spoke the word, the universe came into existence and the very first thing that the devil did, he came and said, did God say? Did God say? He used the same trick with Jesus in the desert. But didn't God say? And, and, and so the enemy comes immediately to rob, to choke the word of God out of your life. Why? Because when you, are, when you have the word of God on its side of you, you're strong. You're, you're dangerous to the devil. He knows that the God's dynamic power is in you and he cannot trick someone who is equipped for the war. Amen. So, um, when the enemy, now we're talking about Ephesus, and it's interesting, Ephesus was a place of tremendous, tremendous victory for the kingdom of God, but it was also a place of tremendous fight. There was a strong fight. Now it says in 19, chapter 19, verse 20, it says, that when Paul came to Ephesus, that the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, grew mightily and prevailed. I mean, there's, there's you know, uh, uh, Artemis, um, uh, whatever principalities or powers were ruling that, that place of Ephesus could not stand and could not stop the word of God. The word of God grew mightily and prevailed. But it's interesting, there in verse 23 it says, And about that time there arose a great commotion about the way. A man, a silversmith, his name was Demetrius. He, his, his profession was to make idols and to worship Diana, uh, Artemis. Uh, and so he, he rose. Uh, so at the same time that, there was, that the word of God uh, uh, prevailed, there was persecution that came against the word of God. The enemy hates the word of God. You know, Jesus told us in the parable of the seed in Mark chapter, seven, chapter 4, verse 17, Jesus said that when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, notice what the enemy does, persecution or tribulation arises. Why? Is, don't take it personally. It's, it's not about you. You're not that important to the great schemes of the enemy. He would love to kill you. But it's what is really a big deal is the Word of God on inside of you. 
And then the scripture that says, what the Apostle Paul said, young man, you are strong. The word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. When, you, when the word of God abides in you, you have overcome the wicked one. He cannot have a field day with you because you know who you are in Christ. You know the promises of God that are yes and amen. You know where you stand. You know that the greater one lives on inside of you. Hallelujah. You know that if God be for you, who can be against you? You know you're not a victim. You're a victor. You know you're not a worm. You're a child of the Almighty God. And when you know that, you are loaded. You have bullets in your, in your weapon, and he cannot stand that. But he's after the bullets. He's after what's on inside of you. In 1 Corinthians 5.32, the apostle Paul, thinking about the time that he spent in Ephesus, he said these words. He said, in the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Wow. In a I fought with beasts in Ephesus. It was like a ferocious fight. So beasts, savage wolves, ravenous wolves. What, what's that all about? It's about, it, it's so that we understand that the enemy hates the word and he'll put up a fight against the word. Now, what beasts fight against you, uh, um, fight against your time in the word? What ravenous wolves come? You know, the enemy will try to convince you that it's probably not that important It'll probably create a diversion or a distraction. It'll probably keep, keep you so, so incredibly busy that at the end of that week or then at the end of that day, you have absolutely zero energy and zero focus and, and brain space to read the Word of God. But you have to identify what ravenous wolves have come, come against me every day to stop me from reading the Word of God. What is it that is robbing me my time, my relationship with the Word of God? Could it be the situations, or could it be that the enemy is probably playing tricks in your mind and say, well, that's nothing, that's not, that's just, that's just someone came up with that. It's not really the word of God. I've got so much to say in this, in this <laughs> message. And um, uh, next week we have Pastor Alejandro Arias, and the following week, God willing, we will continue this message because I think it is crucial for you to overcome in these last days that we're living in. Amen. So we will come back to it. Is that okay? Is that okay? Amen. So I'm going to have to kind of stop right here. But, but I just want to say this to you, and I'm just going to wrap it up. And um, um, I just say this. You know, when, I, when my parents gave their lives to the Lord, it was amazing. That change was undeniable. And, and they only managed to drag me to church one time and that was because they said, we have drums in the church. And I'm like, I've got, to, I've got to see that because the only church I knew was the church of my grandmother. And in her church, was really a dark place lit with candles with some organ somewhere that playing, you know, some music that was totally foreign to me. But I was a young guy. You know, I was, uh, I was I'm not going to tell you who I was because... It's none of your business, and God has forgiven, and God has forgotten, amen, and I don't live in the, I was, I, I, I live in who I am in Christ right now, amen, and I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, but I was a cynic, I was a, I was a skeptical, I, I thought I was very smart, I was very prideful, I was in university, uh, I had had uh, the highest marks in, 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 at that time in four years. I, 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 the, the highest marks in philosophy. I love philosophy. I read all the uh, classical philosophers or some of them. I was familiar and I read a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, contemporary philosophers. I was a fanatic of, of existentialism, you know. Uh, by the way, that never brought me any joy. They just wanted to, me to, I just felt like killing myself. You know, when you read the existentialists, you just feel like, well, there's no hope in the world. You never get any hope out of that. But anyway, I thought it was very smart. My brain cells were highly educated. And, and so I thought when my dad came home and he started reading the Bible at home, I mean, my dad never read anything. I don't think he even read the newspaper. But anyway, but suddenly he's reading the Bible at home and he's reading the Bible out loud. And I'm I'm thinking, that is absolutely nuts. I said, Dad, you know, I can give you some books that can really, you know, be intellectually challenging. But that stuff you keep reading at home, I mean, come on, give me a break. 
I mean, what's, what about, what's about that story of God being so great but sent His Son down on the cross? I mean, just, sorry, it just doesn't make sense. The Bible does say that the gospel is foolishness unto those who perish, but to those who are being saved, it is the dunamis, it is the power, it is, it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. So I, I would go home. My, my dad would be reading his Bible out loud. Out loud. All men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm like, what does that even mean? Uh, you know, there is only one mediator between man and God, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that whoever would believe in him Oh, would not perish but have eternal. I mean, my dad just kept reading that stuff over and over again. And I would, I would go and lock myself in the room because I thought, you know, intellectually, this doesn't pack any punches for me. This is kind of, this is not really what I've, I wanted something really that would kind of tickle my intellect, that would kind of, you know, mean something to my brain cells. And, and so I would go and hide in a room and there's my dad reading his Bible out loud. And I think many times he would come to the wall, uh, uh, the wall just outside the room. <clears throat> For all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the free gift of God is so, I'm like, oh, give me a break. Sometimes I would just, I would just leave home. I'm like, dad, I'm out of here. Bye-bye. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later when you're not in that trance kind of thing. I'll see you later. So I would come home late. I'd go to places that I'm not going to mention here. And, uh, and I would come back. And I would come back, back many times empty. And I would lie on my bed. And those words were ringing in my brain. And I would think, well, what if that is all truth? What if there is God in heaven? What if my, my dad is onto something? But then another voice would say, oh, this is just a phase in his life. He'll, he'll snap out of it. You know, I mean, this is just a phase. He'll, soon, soon he'll be out of this thing. But, you know, when this thing went on for a year or just a long time and I just see the change in my, life, in my parents' lives, there's a joy. They're no longer singing, smoking cigarettes. They're no longer darkening the, the walls in my house with this yellow nicotine and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, well, this, this, this is crazy. I hope this would be a phase, but now it's, it's taking. Anyway, but my dad just kept reading his Bible out loud every day at home. And sometimes I would go into my room, just crank up the stereo really loud because I didn't want to hear it. But my dad would speak over the stereo, the words of God. And then I would leave again. And then my dad would look at me and say, son, you're not going to go to hell, not on my watch. You're going to be saved. I am praying for you, son. I'm like, dad, saved from what? What are you talking about? And I would leave, you know. I'll never forget one day I'm walking towards the university, you know, the campus. Um, and uh, I had my, you know, I was walking and some guy bumped into me and said, hey, would you like to come to uh, a conference that's happening right now? And the guy said, I belong to such and such religion. I said, really? You know, I loved a good debate. That's why I went into law, because I love to debate. I love to talk. And so I went into law. And so... I started debating with this guy, and he said, oh, okay, good, good, good. Why don't you just come with me? And it, it took me along. It just took me along very skillfully. It took me along, just dragged me along. Suddenly, I found myself in, this, in the middle of this conference, and I'm sitting there, and this was, this was not a Christian church. This was a, a cult, and, and I'll never forget, this guy had a whiteboard, and he's writing on his whiteboard, and he's doing his thing in the middle of this conference, and, he's, and suddenly... Suddenly, I felt something very strange, and, and I can only say it was supernatural. I felt like an energy just coming into my body, and I started shaking. And, I, and it's, I'm like, I had never, I, you know, at that point, I didn't believe anything supernatural because I only believed things you could put under the microscope. And, and that was not the thing. I was just suddenly, I'm like, whoa, what is this? And I stood up, and I said, excuse me, sir, can I please say something? And, and then he said, yes, young man, tell us, tell us. And when I stood up, I started speaking. And, and, I, and I, as I opened my mouth, I thought I was going to do what I normally would do, just debate. 
and not even knowing the subject, but just debating for the sake of debating. But when I opened my mouth, every word that my dad was reading out loud at home started coming out of my mouth. Oh, oh, oh I'm like, I'm like, oh, 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 all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is only one mediator between man and God, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son, so that whoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have eternal life. And I mean, I, oh, I, I just went on like my, my mouth was just like a machine gun of Scripture. I'm just, I mean, bullets are ricocheting all around that room, and people are being hit by the Word of God right, left, and center. And I'm preaching. I wasn't even a preacher. I wasn't even a... A believer. Have you ever learned, read in the Bible how God used a donkey? I know that for effect it does. And when I finished, I looked at my watch and I'm shaking because the Word of God is dynamic. The Word of God is God's electricity, God's energy that gets into you. Hallelujah. And I'm like, I looked at my watch. I'm like, uh, an hour had passed and the man hadn't interrupted me. At the end, he just said, listen, young man, can you please come here next week? So, no, sorry, he said, tomorrow, and tell us some more. I said, excuse me, sir, I don't even know enough for myself. I, I took off out of that place, and I'm thinking, I don't even believe this. I don't even believe this. I don't even believe this. And I went home, and I got home. I opened the door, and there's my dad. Oh, my goodness. With his Bible open. I'm like, Dad, will you please stop it? Stop reading that book. That book is messing with my brain. My dad calmly looked at me and said, Son, that book is not like those books you read in university. Jesus said, My words, they are spirit and they are life. I said, Dad, what does that even mean? My dad was also a new believer. So he's like, Well, I, I'm not 100% sure, but it's... It means that the Word of God is dangerous. It goes into you, and it never leaves you. I'm like, whoa. I could not dispute that. I surrendered. I said, Dad, can I have one of those books myself? That week, my dad brought me a Bible. Oh, I started reading the Bible with... I had no idea what I was even reading, but I'm like, whoa, this stuff is dangerous, and it's coming into me, and it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It still is coming back into me. It still is energizing my life. You know, His words are still spirit, and they are life. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is not like the words of any man. These are the words of Almighty God. Hallelujah. He spoke the worlds into existence. They're still expanding at the speed of light. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I was reading the other day, you know, in 1970-something, 70 75, you know, there was a thing called Voyager that was sent from Earth to explore the state, sorry, the, the space. And, and, and it's been traveling at the speed of 73,000 kilometers uh, uh, an hour. But it's just barely left the, our solar system. And the scientists will say at that kind of rate, it will take him 500 million years to reach the end of what is observable from the earth. Now to think that when God said, let there be, my goodness, that word went to the edges of the universe and bounced back in a moment of time. Come on. And God created. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God for his word. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm, I'm getting way too excited. I'm, I'm just, uh, we need to kind of wrap up. Let's all stand to our feet today. Did you get anything out of the Word of God today? Amen. Come on. We're going to get into it in a couple of weeks' time. Next week's going to be amazing. Pastor Alejandro Ari is going to pray for anything that moves. Hallelujah. Let's all just, just in the closing moments of this service, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, let me just make an appeal here today. And just talk to those that are here for the first time. If you're here for the first time and you've never had an encounter with Jesus, I want you to know that Jesus loves you so much. He wants to lift you up and not pull you down. He wants to pluck you and not uh, plant you, plant you and not pluck you. Jesus has a plan that is wonderful and glorious for your life. 
And I'd love, it would give me so much joy to pray for you here this morning. If you're here for the first time, or maybe the second time, or maybe there was a time you prayed some kind of a prayer, but you went away from God. Would you give me the privilege of praying a prayer for you? Right there where you are, right there where you are. Can I ask you, every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Can I ask you, right there where you are, would you just lift your hand and you say, Preach, preacher, include me in that prayer today. I want to be that person that you pray for. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want what you said to be real in my life. All around this building, quickly, just slip it up. Slip up your hand if you're here for the first time, maybe a second time, or maybe there was a time you prayed some kind of a prayer, but you're not walking with God, and you say, I want to get right with God. I want that word to change my life like it changed your life. Come on, would you just lift your hand? All around this building, no one is looking around. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. I'm a, one last time, I'm going to count to three. When I say the word three will be the last time you hear me say, give your life to Jesus. And it would mean so much to me if I could pray for you today. One, I want you to get head in ready right now. The enemy is against your soul, but there's a God who loves you so, so very much. And you say, Pastor, that's me. One, two. Come on, I'm going to pray for you right there where you are, right now. Three, just put it up. Just put it up. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Anyone else? All around this building. Thank you. In Jesus' name, you say, preacher, that's me. Quickly, slip it up, slip it up, slip it up, slip it up. Let me see your hand in Jesus' name. Can you give Jesus a hand? Come on. God is good. He's a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Friend, if you've raised your hand or you know you should have, please let me, let me lead you in this prayer right now. Just say, dear Jesus, I come to you today as I am, and I surrender my life to you completely without negotiations, without reservations. I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Come Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. From this day forward, I will follow you because I am yours and you are mine. Thank you Jesus for saving my soul. And from this day forward, I will follow you and I am yours. And heaven is where I'm going. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, friend, if you have raised your hand or maybe you prayed this prayer for the first time, right to my right over there, there's Tucking. He has a free Bible for you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, let's all, let's all just, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Norwood to come and we're going to conclude the service. All right, awesome. Why don't we give it up for Pastor Lewis one more time? If you did say that prayer for the first time or for the first time it meant something to you, please do see Tucking after the service and he'll just have a great conversation with you. If it is your first time here in general, we'd love to meet you in the guest lounge. Follow Daniel with the sign over there. Through the guest lounge, there's some light refreshments and some good people over there. If you did want to give in person, there will be tithe bags at this door and the door at the back. And parents, please pick up your children before you get your coffees. We'll see you guys next week.